Glad to have you back with us. I am out of breath. I am sweating. So I am uh, going liberal like uh, Pastor Jackson and Brother Pip, no suit coat. And uh, I'm even loosening the tie tonight so everybody on Facebook can see how liberal we're going. <laughs> Next thing you know, we'll be carrying in IVs, you know, <laughs> preaching with jeans on. Uh, yeah, right. Okay, uh, let's see. Glad to be back here tonight. It's, um, it feels like it's 85 in here to me, but um, if you see, we're, ending, we're missing a, an end table like this one over here. So if you see that, somebody walked off with it. Now, they do have legs, so maybe it walked away. Uh, we are looking for that. And, uh, oh, excuse me. And uh, we, how do you think these look up here? I mean, obviously, they, they match. <laughs> but as far as comfort-wise, because we have to sit them and sit in them also, so um, just uh, just thought I'd try it, you know. Um, I just uh, I just don't want the, those um, benches in the back getting torn up, you know. I don't. Uh, I'm afraid to have them back there. I want them to be used and on display, but I don't want them to get tore up. So um, just. Experimenting, that's all. Um, before, uh, we don't have any major announcements uh, besides uh, this, this uh, Sunday morning, last Sunday of 2022, amen. So get ready to start writing down the wrong year on everything you write and scratching it out and, or trying to make your twos a three. Uh, uh, but um, uh, the last Sunday of 2022 falls on a really good day, Christmas Day. We'll uh, have uh, some... Uh, um, uh, food and whatnot for at 9.30 to 10 this Sunday morning, some coffee and whatnot. I, I don't want to put it downstairs, even though um, the heat's working down there now. Um, and, as, and you ladies, especially you ladies who've been in the building for, uh, we've been in this building for what, 23 years, 22, 23 years? No, 21 years. We've been in, because we moved here in 01. So 21, 21 years. Um, that kitchen's always been cold, and there are no registers in there. Well, uh, Brother Dan and I were in there, and I said, Brother Dan, what's that? <laughs> he said, that's a, it's a blower. It's a fan. I said, yeah, what's, what's connected to it? And we kind of looked at it and walked over into the boiler room. It's hooked right up to one of the motors <laughs> in there. And uh, I turned it on, and the kitchen's nice and cozy. <laughs> Oh, 20, 20 years later, we have heat. <laughs> Just, I looked at it, and I'm like, flip, <laughs> turned on, hallelujah. Jimmy said it smelled a little dusty, but um, that's what happens after 21 years of not using it. Uh, but uh, there is, it's, it's, we don't, I don't want to use it for uh, the sake of not, you know, it being cold or whatever, because it's not, it's, it's warm. But um, uh, the stairs, I'm, I'm tired of stairs, and I know you're tired of stairs, and uh I'd like to just, I don't know um, if we could keep it uh, within the two foyers or however, however we can manage it. I'm not quite sure. Back of the auditorium, I don't know. Uh, but um, uh, breakfast at 930, um, and that's, you know, it's not, that's not formal. Uh, come in at 930, 9, 935, 9, any, any time between 930 and 10 o'clock, the main service will start, start at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll have uh, our church service, a couple of uh, specials, I believe. Miss Sarah is putting those together, um, and uh, we'll let you out of here. No PM service, so um, uh, I hope that you can enjoy it with family. I hope that you will, and um, you won't let um, the uh, the Martha syndrome get you for the day. Um, spend some time with family, uh, but most of all, spend some time with our Lord that day. Uh, so do that, and then uh, let's see, then the new year, January 1st is Sunday morning, Sunday morning. Uh, I have something that I'm trying to do. I, I want to be transparent. I know this is on Facebook, but not everybody watches the full service, so I'm not uh, too concerned. Um, our church is, um, it's been a peculiar church for a while now. It's been, uh, um, <laughs> amen, uh, and I don't mean to, to uh Trump it up in any way, shape, or form, but it's 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 been a bit of a miracle church. Uh, most churches um, would have joined or closed, or uh, uh, took desperate measures. Uh, we have um, we have taken 
small, prayerful, faithful steps the last several years. And uh, it got me thinking this afternoon, uh, you know, uh, I have no, no issue at all um, calling uh, Pastor Jackson or Brother Pip or Brother Kevin or Brother Dan at this point to fill in on a Wednesday or a Sunday night. Um, uh, if need be, I'm, I'm here on Sundays, so I don't see any issue with that. Uh, but I have no uh, problem leaning on these men. But um, churches cannot run um, dysfunctionally and scattered and um, uh, uh, miscommunication and expect to succeed. So um, I don't know how to put it. I preach all my, I, I, I give all my greatest speeches, my greatest sermons, um, uh, my greatest teachers meetings and staff meetings behind the wheel of my Kenworth T680 driving down the road. Uh, they all come out so eloquent. They all come out so, uh, there's no ums. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't stutter. I don't fall over my words. They're so well thought out. It's like I wrote them down and rehearsed them. Uh, and then I take that thought and I go, okay, I need to express that. And then I get up here and go, Ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da. but what I would like to do is I would like to begin, our church needs to run until we can have the quote unquote normal church <laughs> that I don't know that I would ever want to have anyway. Um, but until um, the Lord opens doors for me to be able to go full time one day, our church has to run on a communication and efficiency. Things have to be done right, which means that somebody's got to be calling the shots. Okay, just because I have title of pastor doesn't mean that um, I have to um, juggle everything. So what happens in a church is, is there are uh, departments, a faculty. Uh, faculty is just a, a, um, a, a, a different groups, a, a group of people who have um, a, a divisions, divisions, a department, faculty, divisions of people who are working towards a common goal. Um, so what we would do for our church is we would um, take certain people, not everybody, uh, but some people who can and were willing and wanted to, and we're like, yeah, we, we want to do this. They would team up. Doggone it. They would team up, and uh, we would create divisions, divisions or departments. For example, you would have the music department. You would have the um, teaching department. You would have the uh, maintenance department. You'd have... Um, uh, Let's see, music. Uh, you, uh, uh, later on, we'll have the uh, bus department. You'll have the uh, janitorial department. You'll have the nursery department. Um, but I, I, nursery almost, a lot of churches take nursery and put it in with the Sunday school department because they run on the same time. Um, but there are so many, okay, here's one for our church because we have um, uh, youth act activities and adult activities and ladies, meaning you have the event department, not necessarily a party planning committee, but like an event department. And what I would like to do is, is I, I need to start putting some things down on a list um, and think it out. And by Sunday, so n not this coming Sunday, but Sunday the 1st, um, I would like to start having a weekly meeting with... Um, um, People who are considered the faculty. Now, there's some things that the that the potential faculty must understand. Uh, this is not right now. This is not a paid position. This is a uh, there is a cause position, and or there there is a uh, there's there's a gap, and that gap must be filled position, and um, you've got to say well these you have to be able to say the Lord has given me abilities or talents uh, and or willingness for that matter. The Lord will just take anybody. The Lord will take the most un, untalented and unknowledgeable person and do something with them if they're willing. Um, so anybody who's willing to be able to say, hey, I, I'm, you know, I'd like to be, and I'm not looking for volunteers. I'm going to come call you out. That's what I'm going to do. I won't do it from up here, but I will come call you out and say, hey, I would like to put you in this situation or this, 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 um, this department would you, are you interested in it? You can totally say no. This is, I'm not forcing you to do it. 
and you can still come and sit on the pew, and you can still come to the activity. You got, there's no, you're not kicked out of church because you said no to the preacher. <laughs> Um, folk, a lot of people say no to God. It, you ought to have no fear saying no to the preacher. Um, but, uh, 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 but if you say, I don't think I could, the only reason why I thought of you is because I think the Lord laid you on my heart because I see something in you you may not see. Um, that is uh, something that the Lord gives the pastors, discernment. Um, but uh, uh, so the church will begin, will begin to form. Uh, you can't follow somebody or something that isn't leading, so I must lead. So what we're going to do is we're going to create f departments, and then there will be heads of departments, or um, uh, like, for example, um, maintenance. Maintenance could have anywhere from one to three people, and they coordinate with the janitor. And then um, music coordinates uh, from everything from special music to um, uh, the songs for the, the service to children's uh, and, and everything in between. Um, uh, so what I'm saying is, is January 1st, um, start praying about it right now. Lord, uh, I'm willing to be in something. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to, we're going to put this thing together. And we're going to start moving forward, and we're going to start making some headway in 2023. Uh, people have um, not murmured. That's a negative word. Whispers about moving. Uh, if the Lord opens the door for us to move on a level building, I'm all for it. Uh, if the Lord would, would provide a place, then, 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 then we're going to let him do it. Uh, I'm going to let the Lord do it. And then um, we're just going to act like we're staying. You get what I'm saying? We're just going to act we're just going to act like we're staying um, until the Lord opens the door and and we move on out of here and uh, the Lord opens doors or whatever the case may be, but uh, we're going to administrate, we're going to soul win, we're going to teach, we're going to sing, we're going to clean, we're going to maintain like we're staying. Cuz this is our building. This is the building God gave us. So we must take care of it. Be good stewards of it until God gives us something different, right? Okay, that's that's. I don't want to start getting the, the cart before the horse here. So, um, with that being said, if anybody knows of um, and, and listen, we're so humble in taking every every scratch and ding and 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 beat up piece of junk from everybody. We have a God who owns it all. We can ask for nice things. Um, but what I would like to do is, because I think it's dual purpose, is I would like a conference table, um, a nice conference table. Uh, and it doesn't have to be Fortune 500 company, you know what I mean? But it's got a conference table, and um, uh, because that's where we're going to be putting our, I don't, I don't want to pull out, and we, we'll do what we have to do. Um, but um, if you see or know of a conference table that's relatively cheap, or um, some, hey, some office building, they've got four, five, six, eight, ten of those things in a warehouse somewhere, and they're just sitting there. Um, the Bible says, ye have not, because ye ask not. A lot of people think is that's, well, I don't ask the Lord, so I don't have. Well, I went to the store with my mom when I was a kid all the time. She relatively didn't buy me anything if I didn't ask for it. So was I supposed to ask God for the candy bar? No, I asked my mom. Ye have not, because ye ask not. So I've done that with my employers. I've done that with jobs. I've done that with people. Hey, what are we doing with this? Oh, nothing. Hey, can we have that? We need it for our job. Oh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you have not because of gas now. Fundraising, all kinds of stuff. You don't have it because you don't ask for it. If you don't ask for it, the answer is always no. It's always no. Uh, so, but we have a God who can. We have a God who will. Um, it's just that question, are we willing? So uh, departments, we're going to start having departments around here. And um, if, you, if, you, if you don't get asked to be in a department or whatever the case, uh, you come ask me then. Because I don't, maybe that's God saying, hey, you, you go ask. Because uh, I'm not going to pick, I, not everybody, you know. Um, uh, but, um, and if you can't, if you say, I, I just can't, there's not much I can do anymore. There is one incredibly important thing that you can do, and that's pray. Pray for your church. 
Pray for your pastor. Pray for its leaders. Pray for its ministry workers. Pray for Dr. and Mrs. Pohazi for the next 50 years that they'll be in ministry. <laughs> and Carrie and Arif, who are with them every Sunday. So uh, be in prayer for those things. So what we'll do is we'll have our second song. And then um, uh, I got uh, uh, something on the church I want to bring to you tonight. Brother Kevin? Sounds like an opportunity to me, personal one. Okay, please turn your hymnal number 433, number 433, away in a manger. We'll do all three verses. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky look down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing the baby awake. But little Lord Jesus no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus. Look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Be near me, Lord Jesus. I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me I pray bless all your dear children in thy tender care and take us to heaven to live with thee Uh, one last thing on that uh, opportunity is I kind of look at like this is I'm a um, uh, I like sports and I like uh, rebuild uh, the the idea of a rebuild. I like the idea of um, starting from the ground up and from doing again, reviving things. Uh, I've always liked those um, those restoration shows where they take old houses or they take old cars uh, uh, if they could just figure out how to do that with people, uh, you know, and they, and they restore them, you know, and they make them like they were when they were new again. Uh, and, um, and I know uh, that same principle applies here. I know it's not the, the exact same. We're not, I'm not looking to be new again. Um, and I'm not necessarily trying to restore what we once had. What I, my thinking, not my thinking, the belief is, the, the truth is, is that there are there's still blessings out there. There's, God wants to still do big things, and he wants to do them in Fort Wayne. Um, and you say, how do you know he wants to do them in Fort Wayne? Because I live here, and you live here. And I'm a child of God, and so are you. And God wants to do big things. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. I had not seen, near ear, uh, neither had, ear hath heard, or neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for Three Rivers Baptist Church because they love him. God, I, and we're a, a church that I believe we love God. We just kind of got to get our bearings again. And um, we'll, we'll um, uh, put it together, and God wants to do big things. So I look at it like this. Do you want to be a part of building something? A lot of people, they, they want to be a part of something. Man, I wish I was in the garage when they made Microsoft. Man, I, was wish, I wish I was with uh, Bezos when he made Amazon. I wish I was there when that happened. I wish I was there when they sliced bread or, or they made the wheel. You know what I mean? I wish I was there to see that Okay, well, you didn't land on the moon, you didn't slice bread, you didn't create Amazon, but bless God, you can build something at Three Rivers. You can build, did you know this, you can build the biggest Sunday school at Three Rivers Baptist? Did you know you could build the biggest Sunday school, your class, you could build the biggest Sunday school, I bet you, in Fort Wayne? Because if there was some big, flamboyant, giant, attractive, 
um, uh, 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 Sunday school but that, that the hand of God was on in Fort Wayne, we'd all know about it. We'd know about it. Why? Because we're in religious circles and we would know. We wouldn't know if there's some big old uh, uh, thriving, and I don't mean they run, just because they run a thousand doesn't mean they're thriving. I've seen tons of flies attracted to unmentionable things. It doesn't mean it's thriving. People are attracted to all kinds of different things. And and I'm not necessarily talking solely numbers. I'm talking about the power of God where we walk out of here and go, y'all remember that electricity in the air? Y'all remember you'd walk in and be like, man, there's something different in the air. It's Sunday. Um, I love the preaching of the word on Sunday. Jesus is so dear to me, for he died to set me free. Hallelujah. And, and all the whole choir, I mean, we, we had packed out choir. Hallelujah. Amen. It's Sunday. And then there was always something. There was all, when preacher would get up here and turn red, people would uh, uh, cry, people would laugh, people would get right, people would be fighting out in the parking lot. <laughs> we don't want to do that again. Um, uh, but just doing all that over again because you knew the Spirit of God was in that place. You knew that you were going to hear from heaven. And uh, that wasn't just a Sunday morning happening. That was a culmination uh, Sunday through Saturday, week in and week out, week in and week out, because it was organizing the Holy Spirit into everything that we did and making Jesus the center of it, making Jesus the center. Um, I have um, what I attempted to teach, and this was when I was um, trying to get my bearings and, and, and figure out where we were going to go as a church and what we were going to do. Um, and I knew, you know, kind of rough, but, you know, the format of it. And I, I got all these books for my classes. It's, um, it's called Continue, Continue. Once you're saved, you're baptized, you've been in the Word for a while, you know, continue in it. And uh, there's a, a chapter in it about the local church, about the local church. What I want to do is I want to give you just a, a bunch of stuff you already know. And I want to give you three, three quick points, three uh, uh, quick points. Now, one of the best parts of, uh, of the Christian life is being part of a local church. Like I said uh, last week, is about a community, being a part of a community. But it's, um, uh, the church is the instant institution that God himself established, and it is the vehicle that Christ himself um, uses. It's the vehicle in bringing the gospel to the world. Uh, the Bible says, how should they hear without a preacher? Uh, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. So, and you and I, you and I get to be a part of it get to be a part of it. Uh, now, the word church can mean a couple of different things, but it means ecclesia. It means a called out assembly. Called out. Called out. Called out from what? I think it means called out from the world, called out, called out from your old nature, called out from being um, divided of each other, but uh, a called out, hey, come on, I'll, you know, come out, come together and do something for the Lord. Um, uh, now, the church, Christ loved the church and Christ died for the church. The Bible says Christ loved it and he gave himself for it. Christ loved it and he gave himself for it. So although church attendance, it doesn't, not, it doesn't get us saved. I heard a guy say on the radio today. Um, uh, it was an ad for a podcast. Uh, he said, um, I will not forgive. I will not. And it's a mystery. Some, some five unsold mysteries down in Kentucky somewhere. And he said, I don't care. And he said it with his Kentucky accent. I don't care. Uh, uh, I don't. I, I don't care if it sends me to hell. I will never forgive the person who killed my son and granddaughter. And I said, "Well, good, because unforgiveness doesn't send you to hell." Do you know that? Do you know unforgiveness doesn't send you to hell? Because if somebody, if, if if one of my boys grew up and had a, 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 a daughter and she was my granddaughter and somebody murdered my son and granddaughter, I'd probably have a hard time forgiving them too. And I know I'm saved. I know I'm going to heaven. I'd like to be able to find that guy and say, hey man, did you know unforgiveness doesn't send you to hell? He was willing to send his eternal soul in hell over for unforgiveness. Good news, bub. Unforgiveness doesn't send you to hell. That's great news. That's a wonderful thing. And that's the purpose of the church, to tell people what does send you to hell. (laughs) You know what does send you to hell? Yeah, being bad, probably doing something bad, thinking things I shouldn't, maybe, you know, not doing good stuff. You know, people don't know. They don't know. But they think they do know what gets them to heaven. 
being good, doing, you know, doing these things. And most religions are works-based anyway. They all may differ in their terminology and in their uh, wordology, uh, but they're all, they're all practically works-based, works-based. And they don't have Bibles. They don't have real Bibles. By grace are ye saved through faith. Not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God, lest any man should boast. Right there, that just slams the door closed on anybody who believes in work salvation. Um, uh, but that's, and that's our job, and we get to be a part of it. That's what we've been commissioned to do. Called out assembly, Christ purchased the church, died for it, and Christ commissioned the church. He said, I, I, uh, uh, I, I purchased it, um, I, I've called you out, and I've commissioned you. I've given you a task. So before he ascended back up to heaven to be on, uh, uh, to be on uh, the right hand of God, Christ gave specific instructions to the church, and he said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to reach the world with the gospel. I want you to reach the world with the gospel. I think Three Rivers, can. I think we can have our own printing ministry. And I don't mean third party it out or say, hey, we can design it on our own computers. And no, and I'm not trying to keep up with other churches. I'm trying to say we can print our own stuff to reach our own region. We can, we can do that. We can, and, and I'm all for the sword of the Lord. I'm all for the ads. I'm all for that stuff. But, uh, uh, and I'm not saying we, we've used those things. And we probably will continue to use those. We don't have to print every little thing that we do. We can still uh, use other printers and publishers and whatnot. But um, uh, uh, I want to reach our territory. I want to reach our region. There's no reason why we can't. He commissioned us to do this. He said, uh, uh, hey, Three Rivers Baptist Church, I've given you a job to do, and it's to reach the world with the gospel. I have a great way that we're going to introduce soul winning to everybody. Uh, we're going to have just saturate Saturday on, um, uh, not this Saturday, this will be stay at home Saturday. <laughs> Don't come knocking on the door Saturday. Uh, whatever it'll be, rain, sleet, snow, and s- weather that won't be in heaven. And I don't care what anybody says. Uh, uh, so I don't want to hear it. Uh, but uh, <laughs> stay home Saturday. Sleep in Saturday. Um, you know, anyway. Um, uh, it'll be in the future and, the, and maybe this, this, this spring. Uh, but uh, uh, saturate Saturday, and it'll be more or less um, maybe like um, uh, uh, a packet of things that we put in. Like a, you, um, Brother Pip and Brother Kevin did them for a while, like um, a newspaper bag. You slip it in there and hang it on somebody's door, or we'll do actual nice brochures that are cut out, like the like hotel do not disturb signs. You know, uh, door hangers. Uh, put them on there, and uh, and and that's easy. Anybody can do that. You don't have to be a people person. You don't have to be a smooth talker. You don't have to be a salesman. All you have to do is be able to walk and move and walk up to people's doors and put it on there. And I don't care if you do it quietly like a ninja and sneak off. You can walk up and put it on somebody's door and walk away very, very quietly. We are hunting souls. Um, we're uh, hunting wabbits, amen. Uh, we're, um, uh, we, we, we place it on their door and we walk away and that's all it. You take 10 of them, take 15, take 25 of them, take 50 of them. And what we'll do is we'll shoot for a monthly quota every month. We'll say, okay, uh, this month, this is what we're gonna do. Or this week, this is what we're gonna do. And, then, uh, and, and that's how you start it. Because when you go out to do that, you will come in contact with people. I know, it's scary. And you will be able to witness people, and you will have contacts to people. But Saturate Saturday, we did it at college. They called it Operation Saturation. And within, oh, when you have a 1,000 people doing it, I think within one month there were like 700 visitors or something. It was, it was uncanny. Um, uh, so, but anyway, work, 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 work. So commission Work the commission that we've been given. So he called it out, he purchased it, and he commissioned us. Now, in our church, Christ is to have the preeminence. Who's to have the preeminence? Christ. Christ is. It's his church. He died for it. So he gets the preeminence. Everything around here is God-centered, Christ-centered, Bible-centered. It's all uh, we're not, nobody's the, better than anybody else. There's just because somebody wearing nicer clothes or living in a nicer house or driving a nicer car or has a better education, it doesn't mean they get to sit at the front while the pauper gets to sit in the back. And, and no, 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 the Bible specifically teaches against that. 
Um, uh, and by the way, it doesn't mean vice versa. It doesn't mean that the, the poor get to come up front and the rich have to sit in the back. It means, hey, find, a, find yourself a seat. Find yourself a seat. Uh, and around here, it's they, they, they sit on the same pew uh, because they're all poor. Now, Christ is to have... <laughs> Laugh, folks. I know it's Wednesday. Uh, Christ is to have the preeminence in the church. Now, the church is a distinct thing, and it's more than a building. So understand that. There are churches all over the world that don't have a building, but they are called out people. Christ purchased them just like he purchased us. Christ did not purchase our building. He purchased our body. He purchased it. What know you not? You are not your own 1406 Lombard Street. He didn't say that. What know ye, ye, ye not? He's speaking about us as singular people, of course, as, as, as a whole, but, but even as singular people. Uh, you're not your own. You've been bought with a price, but the church is more than just a building. Um, it's a, of course, it's a place where we all meet together, uh, where we grow in God's word together, where we glorify God together, and then we build lasting friendships with other Christians. Uh, the church is not simply a universal body of saved people. Um, it is uh, comprised of um, all kinds of assemblies, all kinds of um, uh, saved, baptized believers. Saved, baptized believers. So throughout the New Testament, emphasis is placed on the local church, the local church, individual bodies of believers who gather together, like seven churches in the New Testament were individually named. Um, uh, individual bodies of believers who gather together as a church and follow the New Testament pattern as uh, uh, of our church practices. So Acts chapter two, verse 47. You don't have to turn there. Nope, you don't have to turn there. I just want you to listen. Acts chapter two, verse 47. Unless you want to um, uh, open it up and you underline and take notes and different things like that, that's completely fine. I'm not telling you you can't. I'm just saying, you. It, it, I'm not telling you to turn there. The Bible says in Acts chapter two, verse 47, praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Now get that. It said such as should, uh, such uh, uh, as daily such. There we go. As should be saved. It didn't say took classes. It didn't say daily as uh, 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 daily such as should be baptized. It said saved. Now, Three Rivers Baptist Church membership is saved, baptized, membership. Family of God is salvation. Getting baptized is not a requirement to be in the family of God. To get, to get born again, baptism is not required. Now, I'm not teaching you doctrine tonight. I know that most of you, I believe in here, are, are you, you understand that as well as I do. Baptism was not a requirement. Such as should be, say that word with me, saved. No, with me. Saved. There we go. You're like, well, we don't know when you're going to say it. One, two. No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, 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 such should be saved. Uh, Acts 9.31. Uh, then had uh, the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Acts 15.41. And he went through Syria and Sicilia confirming the churches. Those were separate places, local churches. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased number daily. So the next nine uh, New Testament books after uh, uh, Acts, which would be Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, and um, uh, all those are letters written to local churches. All of those are local churches. Um, the Bible wasn't just written uh, in a general, hey, all of you churches, uh, this is what I want. Now, could um, the Thessalonians um, take some truths from the Colossians? Sure. Could uh, the Colossians take some things from the Corinthians? Sure. Could uh, uh, all, everybody take some things from Rome? Sure. Those principles, the truths did not change, but all of those were individual letters. 1 Corinthians 1-2 says, uh, uh, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, um, uh, to that now, is there anything that what if, if if we can't take things, if these churches couldn't take other truths written from Paul and in, in all the letters to the other churches, then we can't take any of them either because we are our own local church 
And what do we do? We take all of them, don't we? We have all, we have all of the letters. <laughs> we have all of them. So if, if, you can't, if one church couldn't use the other, if, uh, one letter and the other couldn't use another letter, then I guess we can't use any of them either. But it's not. It's, that's not it's, we get to use all of them. We have all of the truth because we are a local New Testament church that Christ purchased, that he called out, and that he's commissioned us to go and teach the world. He says, uh, the church that's at Corinth, just like the one that's in Fort Wayne, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, uh, with uh, all that in every place, call upon the name of, the, of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Now, you had uh, after... Uh, Oh, the Thessalonians, there are three other ones. Um, there's First and Second Timothy and Titus. Those are written to local church leaders, Timothy and Titus. Those are written to leaders in the church. So I guess you could say uh, uh, 12 of New Testament epistles uh, specifically deal with the organization, the operation, um, the, the walk and the talk and the relationship within the local church the way a church and leaders are supposed to behave. So just what is the local church and how is it structured? All right, we know we were called out. We were called out. We were supposed to pattern ourselves after a local New Testament church, the New Testament. All right, who can tell me who our authority is? Who's our boss? Well, yeah. The Bible, thank you, the Word of God, biblical authority. Don't look back there. Miss Jennifer and Miss Jamie, you should be eyeing over there. These, Okay, anyway, uh, biblical authority. Biblical authority, okay? Then we have something else called autonomy of, um, of or you could say self-governing power. Self-governing power. There's no um, Southern Baptist Convention. There's no independent Baptist Convention that tells us we need to raise money or support a certain missionary or whatever the case. Preach certain sermons, um, uh, have certain these certain standards. We have autonomy of the local church. It's ours because Christ is the, excuse me, Christ is the head of it. We believe every local church should be independent. It's an independent framework outside of governmental structure. Uh, also, we have something called the priesthood of the believer. Priesthood of the believer. I, I've said this before. I've mentioned it uh, um, before in some examples. I was on the phone with a, um, a fellow who is uh, Catholic, um, and uh, he said, Bubba, and, and it was a good conversation in, in his, in his, in his, um, un, his ignorance, uh, and I don't mean that, in any rude way, uh, but he was very naive to understand the gospel as I was, and it was a business call. And I, oh, you're a pastor of a church. We begin to talk. And uh, he said, you know, it just feels good to be able to go in and, and, and confess my sins to uh, the priest there. And, you know, I just feel good, you know, walking out. I said, man, that's good. I said, it's good to confess your sins. I said, but can I, can I tell you something? He said, what? I said, you don't need him. What? And I'm telling you, this is, he grew up Catholic, and, and I said, you don't need him. He said, what do you mean? I, I said, well, I, you may need him, but I don't. And I wasn't being rude in any way, shape, or form. And I said, you, you may need him because maybe that Catholic is your persuasion. I was like, but Jesus is my persuasion. And he said, well, what do you mean? I said, I've got something called the priesthood of the believer. And he said, priesthood of the believer? What is that? I said, well, when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as, as taught in Scripture, I said, you become a saint yourself. You are sainted at that very moment. I said, you are a saint, sanctified in Christ, bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. I said, you can now approach God yourself. I said, that guy you confessed to in a booth, he probably has worse sins than you do. And, uh, and I said, who does he confess to? Well, he gets to go to God. I said, yeah, but you don't know him. I mean, you may know him, but he's flesh and blood just like you are. I said, that's why you don't go confess your sins to another man. I said, and Jesus himself said, don't call any man father, but your father that's in heaven. And he said, I've never heard any of that. I said, and I told him, I said, that's, we're, it's not a cult. I said, that's the Bible. I said, don't you read your Bible? no. <laughs> You can have something if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior. That's it. I said, and I'm not asking you to, I'm not telling you to stop going to Catholic Church, Catholic Mass. No, you should. I said, stop being a Catholic and be a follower of Jesus Christ. 
which will lead you to a Baptist church, uh, Three Rivers Baptist church. Uh, and I said, who baptized Jesus? John the Baptist. That made Jesus the Baptist. Okay, let's move along here. The priesthood of the believer. Priesthood of the believer. I can go to the Lord on my own and confess my sins. Um, uh, it says so. Uh, For there is one God and one mediator. Ah, get that. I wish I would have thought of this. Uh, For there is one God and one mediator. One. In Fort Wayne, there's probably a hundred. Or so they think. One mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus. (laughs) I love that. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Uh, uh, number one, Bible authority. Number two, autonomy of the church. Number three, priesthood. Number two, uh, number four, uh, two offices. Two offices. Two, oh, you say two offices. We have a couple of them. No, the pastor and the deacon. Pastor and the deacon. Pastor and a deacon. Or an elder or a bishop, how they're referred to. But um, uh, uh, two offices. And then individual soul liberty. They're all back there. All of them are back there. I want to fast forward real quick. Separation of church and state. Two ordinances in our church, just two and only two, baptism and the Lord's Supper. Uh, my boss was riding with me the other day. Uh, where'd we go? Kentucky. We picked up these. Oh, what a nightmare. We had to get these two buildings, 16 feet wide, 65 feet long, inside of a warehouse, out of the warehouse, and pick them up and put them on these trailers and chain them down and drive them an hour away, and then two cranes pick them up. It was a nightmare. Anyway, um, my boss was with me, and he, he had a, wouldn't quit coughing. And I said, hey, I got a water in my fridge if you want it. So he pulled back there, and, and he got out of water. <laughs> and he looked back, and he saw, I mean, I got a big old 64-ounce 64 64 uh, thing of grape juice. I like grape juice. I just like drinking orange juice, grape juice. I like it. And he said, oh, you got your communion with you? <laughs> I said, yeah, knowing you, you need to take it. I knew you were coming with me today, so uh, I wanted this this uh, trip to be blessed. <laughs> he laughed. You know, we got a good laugh out of that. But I, I, I like it. I like, um, I, I like grape juice on its own. But I, I told him, I said, when communion at our church is over, I always go back and get extra cups and drink some more. <laughs> Can't have it going to waste, you know. Uh, two ordinances, baptism and the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So we look at baptism. Um, uh, it's as a, uh, uh, an ordinance, not a prerequisite or a, a condition of salvation. And then we have something what uh, we will begin to teach on more in depth, especially in my Sunday school class. But separation and personal holiness. Separation and personal holiness. Separate from the world. Come out from the world. Be separate from them. I have so much more here, but um, I, I, I need to shut it down. I have one more place to go tonight before I can go to sleep. Uh, what I want to tell you to do, you know what, I'm going to run through this. No, I'm not, because it's too important just to over. What I'm going to ask from you, uh, from, from all of you, and your Wednesday crowd is usually your, um, your fanatics. I see all my fanatics in here tonight. Um, uh, is usually uh, uh, your, uh, the core of the core in, in, in most parts. Um, but uh, I want to ask you three things. And most... I don't want to just you I don't want you just to assume that you're doing it. I want you to even though I I think that most of you are, but I'd like for you to do a self check, a self evaluate. Miss Hillary asked me tonight. She said, "How are you, Pastor Jake?" And I said, "I don't know. I haven't checked." <laughs> I, I I don't know. I'm just kind of flying doing things and she said, "You, sh- you should probably stop and check." Um, if I did that, I'd be in the hospital. I'm sick. Not really. I feel well. Um, but, uh, number one, number one, decide to be faithful in your attendance. Deci- just decide it. Decide to be faithful in your attendance. In the Christian life, there's no substitute for the church. There isn't a substitute. You can have substitute sweeteners. You can have substitute meals. You can have substitute, um, fillers for all kinds of different things. Um, but you cannot have, there is no substitute for church. Um, Reading your Bible extra and praying extra is all well and good, but there's no substitute for church. Be in church. Now, determine now, determine now, now, now that you're going to attend every time the doors are open. I understand sickness. I understand being tired. I understand depression. I understand, uh, I was about to say, you, weather. I understand weather. I Please understand that if I don't see you one service, I, I didn't, 
blot your name out of the Jake's book of life, okay? I didn't, I didn't blot you out. I didn't write you off. I didn't uh, kick you out of your department. I, I, but please, moving forward, communication is going to be important. And I know I'm not always the best responder at texting back. Um, but uh, I always don't think I need to be. And if you're telling me, hey, I'm not going to be there tonight, I wanted to let you know. I, I'm, I will see it at some point. I understand. If it's an emergency, call me. Um, and if I don't pick up, don't call back. No, uh, call again. Uh, I'll pick up. Uh, communication. Communication uh, is very important. But, but just decide that you're going to be at church, regular scheduled church, every single one that you possibly can be, be at. Number, no, I can see Miss Harrington saying, no, Brother Jake, don't end with the word at. Just decide to be there. I, I hear these guys on the radio all the time. I don't know where they're at. I'm like, uh, uh, it's just like they poked me in my ear, you know, jabbed me in my ears. At, at, at. These professional people. I'm like, you don't end with the word at. What's wrong with you? Um, here I am, truck driver. And you know, anyway, uh, but um, uh, just decide to be there. And number two, decide to be accountable to leadership. You know, you know who it's going to be very difficult for? It's going to be difficult for some people who watched me grow. And, and I don't want to say watch me grow up because a lot of them have showed spiritual maturity because they know the, the pecking order of things. They know that God's in control of things. And, and then if Brother Jake's following God, then Brother Jake's easy to follow. But it'll be difficult for my family because my family knows me better than anybody. And I don't mean my wife and kids. But I mean my mom and dad, my sister, my brother-in-law, my other sister, my other brother-in-law. Uh, my nieces and nephews, I can smack them around. So, I, uh, But uh, uh, it, it'll be difficult. It'll be difficult because it's Jake. It's Jake. No, it's not Jake. When it's in a, uh, uh, a pastoral office setting, it's Pastor Jake. It's pastor. It's preacher. And don't please understand, I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm Jake. But not when it's pastor time. The, the, the job is too important. The office is too holy for it just to be kind of treated lazy, lackadaisical, unimportant. Um, uh, decide to be accountable to leadership because if you do that, it's, it's not just leadership to Pastor Jake. It's leadership to God. It's accountability to God and God's man saying, God, this is the man that's placed here. We're going to follow that man because if he's following you, then we know we're safe. If he'll follow God and we'll follow him, We'll know we're headed in the right direction. So your pastor, your um, your 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 uh, teacher, your bus captain, um, uh, everybody who invests in you through life and and through your church, um, they're there for you for your spiritual benefit. Doesn't always seem that way, uh, but because um, uh, sometimes the lessons are hard. Uh, but be accountable. Be accountable with them in matters of your church attendance, your personal growth, your obedience to scripture, your separation from the world. Be transparent. Be transparent in sharing when you're going through difficult times. When you're going through something tough, you don't always have to say, uh, uh, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. When you're like falling apart, you can say, man, I'm having a hard time. I'm, man, I'm just, and you don't, it doesn't say you have to spill the beans all the time, but you could just say, man, would you mind praying for me this week? Would you mind coming over here and praying for me for a minute? I'm just, I am weary and well-doing and I, I, ooh, I'm having a hard time. You don't always have to be like, I'm great. And on the inside, like, ah, we, we all, we all, we all are guilty of that sometimes. So ask people for counsel, your spiritual leaders, when you have to make huge life decisions, don't just do it, ask Counsel. They are there to help you. But do it, but to, to do so effectively, they need to be, you need to be able to give them an entrance into your life. You have to be able to open the door and let people in. Uh, number one, be, decide to be faithful. Number two, decide to be accountable. And then lastly, number three, decide to be co committed in your involvement. So if you say yes to being in um, XYZ department, the music department, the maintenance department, do it. Do it with all your might and be committed to it. Uh, the pastor shouldn't have to come along. And it shouldn't be once you've said, yes, I will do this. I will be, this will, this will be one of my functions to help at Three Baptist Church. It, it shouldn't be like pulling teeth. The pastor shouldn't say, Brother Angel, how many times did I tell you to put a new roof on the building? 
No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, he's like, wait, what? <laughs> I, I didn't. I, I told a reef to do it. Um, but how many times, you know, and I'm never going to walk up to you and say how many times. I'm not going to talk to you like my child. We're all adults here. Hey, man, when are you going to get on that? Hey, when are you going to fix that? What do you need? What do you need from me for you to get the job done? Because I will do anything and everything in my power to help you succeed. So you and I can help this place succeed so Christ can build his church. If you'll be faithful, if you'll be accountable, if you'll be committed. So more than attending church, be involved in your church. Be involved in your church. Get involved in something. And those opportunities are going to come up this year. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for our church. I thank you for, uh, once again, Brother Pip last week. Uh, who is at the helm? Lord, if we'll put you at the helm in our life, I think all kinds of people will be ready to volunteer and be ready to jump into to certain departments that they're asked for. And uh, the church can begin to um, uh, uh, make some headway in different areas. And uh, Lord, we all look forward to the blessings. Um, but um, uh, we know those blessings come through battle. Help us to be ready to do battle, spiritual battle. Uh, Heavenly Father, we love you. I thank you for all that you've done. I, I look forward to the Christmas season coming up, and, or the, the Christmas day coming up, and uh, Sunday, Sunday. Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us, and um, Lord, I'd ask that you'd keep us safe the next few days. Um, help the furnaces to stay on, and the hot water to keep running, and no pipes to burst. Lord, I'd ask that we'd just, not that we're better than anybody else, and, and not that we're immune from problems, but Lord, that everybody would just kind of uh, find a, a nice sweet spot this week and uh, mentally settle in uh, to the birth of Christ and what he came for. Uh, Lord, I'd ask that you'd protect us, keep us safe. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.